Hello, welcome to this TTK tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reproduce one of the examples shown in the gallery section of the TTK website. So let's go there. So in particular, I will show you how to reproduce uh, this example, the Morse Persistent Demo. So for this, you will first need to open a terminal, like I did here. And I will assume that you downloaded and decompressed the TTK source code and data tables to uh, a directory called TTK here, as you can see, okay? And of course, that you uh, successfully installed TTK. All right, we we'll move on to the uh, data directory here uh, with this command. And here, we'll uh, run the demo by typing the following command, parview dash dash state equals state uh, morse uh, persistence dot pbsm. And we'll press the key enter. Right, and here we go, and here is the demo. So what this demo is showing is a very simple uh, toy example. So you have a triangulated surface that we can see in the center here, with some scalar data attached to it, and this data is very simple, it's just the uh, elevation. So it's blue for low values and green for high values. And uh, as you can see, this uh, data is kind of noisy because you have plenty of very small bumps. So the spheres that you see here in blue, white, and green correspond to uh, the most persistent uh, critical points of the data. So the critical points in the smooth setting are those points where the derivatives uh, vanish. And here in blue, it's a local minimum, in white, a saddle, and in green, a local maximum. And those paths that you see that connect those critical points together are actually the uh, separatrices of the Morse map complex. And I'll further explain this afterwards. Okay, so next in the top right corner you have um, this uh, curve, which is called the persistence curve, in which I described in previous uh, tutorials. And this curve actually describes the uh, uh, distribution of the pairs of critical points as a function of their persistence. So you're supposed to read this curve going from left to right, and this means that as you increase a certain persistence threshold, you have less and less pairs of critical points that are more persistent than your threshold. And often in practice, uh, you observe this kind of double decrease behavior, where you have a first slope here and a second slope here. And usually the first slope um, refers to the removal of the noisy features. And here, uh, the second slope refers to the removal of the, of the large scale features. And here we have to see that the scale of the axis is logarithmic. So, Often, not all the way slow, but often you have this sort of behavior here, where you have a sort of clear cut uh, between uh, the signal and the noise. And this helps users in practice to uh, select the right amount of simplification, of topological simplification for their data. Usually putting a, a, the th persistence threshold to this value here is usually a good idea. All right, so at the bottom now, we have the uh, persistence diagram of the data. So um, this kind of diagram also explained in a previous tutorial. This is a 2D diagram that um, uh, shows the distribution of the pairs of critical points in the data. And each pair here is represented by a vertical bar. And the x uh, coordinate of this bar corresponds to the function value of the uh, critical point which created the pair. And the y coordinate of the uh, critical point up top here corresponds to the scalar. Uh, value of the critical point which destroyed the pair. And here the color coding uh, corresponds to those critical points here. Okay, so what's interesting with this demo is that you can click here on the persistence threshold component of the pipeline and you can directly access uh, the persistence threshold with which you uh, perform some topological simplification. So here the data has been simplified already because we have plenty of small bumps here and for each of those we're supposed to have some uh, topological features. So I will um, modify this threshold to um, simplify less the data and we'll have much more topological features that will appear. Let's click on the apply button. All right, and here the entire visualization has been updated in uh, all the views. So what happens is that now for this, even for the slightest bumps, you have some critical points which appeared and this looks pretty much like a mess. And in the persistence diagram, this appears 
as many、uh, very small bars close to the diagonal here. So、uh, in practice, you want to tune the persistence threshold, and、uh, like I said, the persistence curve can help you with this. So、uh, you just need to look at what value、uh, is indicated on the plateau. So here we see zero point sixty seven. So we、we'll、put zero point seven. We'll click on apply, and you see that now we only see the main features of the data, which are、uh, the main、uh, hills. That appear here. As a matter of fact, you can see that there is one hill in the center here, which is much bigger than the others. So we can even go further in the simplification. Let's put、uh, three. And now we only get this、uh, main mountain here that appears. Okay. So this、uh, kind of、uh, feature is particularly useful when you do、uh, data segmentation. Let me illustrate this. So here、uh, we can illustrate、uh, the Morseman complex segmentation. So we'll click on these guys. Here, and I will change、uh, the color slightly. So this kind of feature is useful for data segmentation. So what I'm showing you here is a representation of the、uh, Morseman complex of the data, and what it means is that for any point located in the same parcel here, if you integrate upwards, uphill, or integrate downhill, you will end up in the same pair of critical points, in the same maximum and the same、uh, minimum here. However, if you go to the other side of this、uh, separatrix, you will integrate downward, upwards to different maximum. While still integrating downwards,、uh, downhill to the same minimum, so the Morseman complex partitions your data into such cells, where uh, the uh, forward and backward integration ends up in the same extremities. So this is very useful in various scenarios. For instance,、uh, in astrophysics, they use、uh, the separatrices that connect the saddles to、uh, the maxima to extract、uh, filament structures、uh, in their simulations that they call、uh, the cosmic web. And、uh, having the possibility to look at this at multiple scales of importance is、uh, very interesting、uh, for data analysis purposes. Okay, so now I will show you how to、uh, produce this example from scratch. So the terrain here has been generated randomly.、Uh, to make a life easier, I will just save the output of this、uh, process. I will call it、uh, noisy terrain, BTU format. There we go. My close part, you know. I clear the view. We'll launch part view. Noisy terrain. And there we go. And here you have the terrain again with、uh, the scalar data that we were looking at. So the first thing we're going to do is to compute、uh, the persistence curve of this guy. Like this, and by the way, I will just come back very quickly. If you want to apply some TTK、uh, processing on your data, you need to click on filters, and then you have the TTK features that appear here in these、uh, submenus.、Uh, but to go faster, usually you want to use the search menu、uh, by clicking here or by hitting the keystroke control and space under Linux, which I will do、uh, a lot because this is much faster. All right, so let's call the persistence curve. Here, TTK persistence curve. Enter. And here, I'll click on the apply button. So this filter has、uh, four outputs. This plugin, and by default, Parview tries to open them all, but actually, only one is enough. So、uh, let's have a look at this guy, and we'll configure it. We'll say that we want the persistence to be on the x-axis and the number of critical points on the y-axis. Zoom out a bit. And select these regions, this region to be plotted. Change the color, blue. Change the width. There you go. You can change the title of the axis.、Uh, one thing that you want to make sure of is、uh, that the、uh, left axis and the bottom axis 
are displayed in the lock scale and you need to check this box here for this to happen. All right. So now we'll compute uh, the persistence diagram of this guy. We'll uh, create a round of view in 2D. Click here. We'll take uh, the noisy terrain and call the persistence, TTK persistence diagram here. And click on apply. All right, and here it is. So by default, the persistence diagram is just the set of bars and edges. You may want to uh, improve the visualization a bit by printing some axes. And here you want to put birth and death for the X and Y axis. All right. And then uh, we'll improve the visualization further. We'll display the diagonal in black, uh, the vertical bars in white, and we'll put some spheres for the critical points. For this we'll do uh, some thresholding here. We'll take uh, the negative identifiers for the diagonal. We'll create a surface out of it and then a tube like this. We'll color this guy in black like that. All right. Then we're going to take the actual persistence pairs by taking this, the uh, non zero, non negative values, sorry. And now, so here we can call this uh, persistence pairs. And now we'll do some actual thresholding on the persistence. And we select here persistence. And let's say uh, we use 0 0.5. All right, so we removed all the tiny arcs, um, which had a persistence less than 0 0.5. Now we'll put some spheres. Make it smaller. Even smaller. Like this. Put this in color, all right, and then we'll call this persistence threshold, and we'll compute a, a surface and some tubes for this guy. Okay, perfect. And now we can play uh, with the threshold to select um, more or less features. Okay, so now we want to see the corresponding critical points or the corresponding Morseman complex. Um, in the center, so the Morse map complex that would correspond to this simplified data. So we just need, we now need to uh, simplify the actual data to make sure that it reflects the simplification we did in the, in the persistence diagram. So we click on the terrain here and we call uh, simplification, TTK topological simplification, enter. We say that the data we want to simplify is this guy, noisy terrain. And as constraints, we want to use the persistence threshold. We want to conform the, topo the simplification of the data to what's shown in the persistence diagram. OK. And I click Apply. And I made a mistake here. Sorry. I forgot to uh, select the vertex identifier field. This is very important. I click on apply again. And here I show the result and the result is um, very uh, similar to the original one but if we uh, compute now the Morse map complex on it we'll see the result. So here it's very important to check this box use input offset field to make sure that the Morse map complex understands uh, the, um, the topological simplification that we did beforehand and we click on apply there we go. So here the Morseman complex has several outputs. Let's put some spheres for the critical points. Like this. Oops, that's too big. That's still too big. Yeah, that's better. Let's use uh, some color coding. So dimension, let's put that bigger. All right. And uh, here, the one separate matrices are actually this path connecting the critical points. So we can put a, um, some uh, surface for them and some tubes. All right, we'll make them uh, slightly uh, smaller. Even smaller. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, I move this to the side like this. And here you see that we have a our simplified Morseman complex, we can actually color this with uh, the um, 
cementation of the Morsena complex, if we want. Use this color scheme, like that. Or we can use the original uh, function. End. And like previously, we can play on the persistence threshold here to uh, automatically uh, have less features or more features, depending on what you want. Let's put some more. And there we go. Okay, so at this point you may want to save your state by clicking on File and Save State uh, to make sure that you save uh, the work that you did in your visualization that you can run the demo again faster next time. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.